Welcome to Magrathy of Beautiful Worlds. This is part three of a trilogy uh, for a Burrows and Badgers Bakery build. Bit of alliteration for you there. Uh, part one was about the building of the actual model, uh, making it, putting the gables and all the bolts of wood. Part two was doing the roof and the tile and everything else. This one, part three, is going to be about finishing details, painting it, getting it ready to go on the table. So if you haven't watched the first two videos, what are you doing here? Go and find them. I'll wait. Watch them now? Good. Okay, so we're going to carry on. First thing we're going to do then is we're going to seal the roof. We're going to cover the whole thing in Mod Podge. And we're also then going to move on to from that. We're going to do some detailing to the woodwork because at the moment it's all still fairly plain balsa. We're going to do those two jobs first of all. Uh, and then we'll look at adding extra details to the model as we go. Right, so the first jobs I said I was going to do was going to be to seal the roof and do some work on the balsa wood. I'm going to do the balsa wood first because when I've got glue on the model, I'm not really going to be able to touch it for a while and let it dry. So I'm going to do this first bit, which is the, at the moment, the balsa is very clean cut, neat and tidy and not at all weathered. So what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to take uh, my craft knife and take off some of these edges and I'm going to take a pen or a pencil into this and try and put in some kind of like more detailing into the wood to make it look old and weathered. So it's going to be done on the front here and of course back here on the back of the model as well. Sharp knife uh, with a, a new blade and all I'm literally doing is taking my blade and running down the edge of the balsa. Just trying to take off that neat sharp edge here giving the wood a bit more of a worn and time time worn and weathered kind of look so taking off all those neat edges balsa is pretty easy to work with but i do like it you have to be careful but not chop away too much but it's quite a forgiving thing so there we go we're starting just to trim away make these edges look A little older and more worn under there. Let's go this way. All right, you can see I'm only cutting away very small pieces of wood here. Don't want anything too drastic cut off. Just enough to make it look like the edges is worn, worn down. It's old timbers. So now I've Trim down all the balsa um, as to how I want it. Uh, taking off all the, the sharper edges. Looks more rough hewn now. And now I want to do some work to the balsa just to make it, again, look even more woody. Uh, make it more interesting to paint. Now, quite a few people nowadays are making models entirely out of XPS foam. This grey stuff. Thinner bits and pieces. They're carving all the woodwork. I still like to use balsa wood. But either way, if you're using XPS foam or you're using balsa wood, you still need to make this stuff look more interesting to paint. These are all very flat surfaces uh, and isn't that interesting to paint. But all I'm doing is I'm taking a biro and literally putting some lines into it and some knot work. Now, the minute this is all looks very crude, especially to the lovely pink biro, um, but as it goes, hopefully you'll see when it gets painted, it will make quite a difference to the overall paintwork. If nothing else, it gives a different texture to some of the wood. It's helpful when you're painting. I have to go overboard. I thought it was quite a nasty pen, this, but actually it's quite useful because it helps you see quite clearly what I'm doing. Here we now have wood detail drawn in. Doesn't look great in pink, I've got to admit, but it does show up so you can see it clearly. Um, and when that gets painted, that'll make a lot of difference. That'll give us more textures to paint over, which is quite cool. Next thing I'm going to do then is I'm going to use Mod Podge. And we're going to seal all of the tiles on both sides of the roof. And also on the two uh, roof panels. Um, that way there, I'll get a decent surface to paint on the roof panels. 
Oh, you can see. I mean, they're quite shiny. That's where they've had some mud podge on them anyway. But I want the whole thing to be completely sealed. Um, and then I'm in the position when that's dry to undercoat it and get painting. <sighs> So I'll let you take in neat mod podge, brush out the water, and painting over the roof tiles. Getting on fairly thick, doesn't matter. This way we're just going to make sure tiles are sealed. Adds that extra level of security. Nothing's gonna Next come. Next thing off. I want to do actually is texture these flat bits of foam core that are still exposed front and back at the moment if I paint them um, it's going to be a completely unrealistic completely perfectly flat surface which is no good really for what I want to do I also want to kind of try and fill if I can these little gaps here too so what I'm going to use here is going to be a mixture of Mod Podge uh, and I'm going to put some polyfiller in as well any reg any powder filler would do perfectly well for this. I'm just going to mix the two up. The polyfiller will, will blend nicely with the uh, water-based glue. And that's going to give me a bit, bit more of a rough texture that I'll be able to paint on that will be more realistic for a building and make uh, will take the paint better. Pouring some Mod Podge into a container here. Thus, here we go. We've got it. Yep. Oh, that's a bit gloopy look. Go glue in there. I'm going to shake in some poly filler as well. Not much. I'm not using any kind of measures here. But uh, we'll see how we go. I just want poly filler to give it a bit of texture. I'm going to take that old paintbrush I had a moment ago. Mix the two together. You can just paint Mod Podge onto the whole thing. If you want, that will give you a, a little bit of texture rather than just having the flat um, cardboard surface. By using Mod Podge rather than just mixing in pure water, um, it will help it stick to the cardboard surface and I shouldn't lose any, it shouldn't peel off at all or get knocked off. It doesn't matter if the stuff goes on fairly thick. Try not to get it all over the balsa wood. Get it into the corners using a fairly old and tired brush now. Right in there. Fill any gaps with it. Now while I'm waiting for everything to dry, one thing that struck me is that I don't have any doors for this building yet. Sometimes I don't even bother making doors for some of my buildings because I like characters to walk in and out. Um, if you put doors there, it puts players off. But um, a building like this needs doors to look finished. So I'm going to use some, what's that, 1.5 millimeter thick balsa wood. Uh, I'm going to cut some rectangles, score some wooden planking into it. And if nothing else, they'll be able to slot into the door space um, and I'll be able to pop them out whenever I need. So uh, let's have a go at doing that. Doors in then, front and back. 
I ended up putting a little wooden threshold under each one because that helps it stand up. Fit quite nicely. Plain door at the back of the house. Slightly posher door with a win little window in the front of it. So these little details, I think, start to make a real difference with these models. Each time you look at it, I want there to be something different to look at. This is one of my favourite parts of the model making process. The part when we get the black spray on it, the primer, which means it all starts to look like it's all the one model, regardless of the different materials components that have gone together to make it so far, it now belongs together. So now comes the painting process. Probably going to start with all the stonework, dry brushed uh, in greys. Um, I tend to use Citadel paints just because I'm old school and I work for workshop and I've always painted with Citadel paints and um, they're just easy to get hold of. So I'm going to use Citadel paints, uh, various greys to paint all the stonework and then I'm going to do the roof um, and then we'll see what's left. Come back in a little while, see what we've got. So this is how far I've got with the painting so far. Um, I've got uh, the backyard that's been base coated in uh, Mornfang Brown. That's going to get dried up to earth colours and have flock added to it. All of the stonework has been dry brushed, starting with a mix of administratum grey and black. I normally use uh, Mechanicus grey, but <laughs> no, it's all dried up so I've uh, mixed them up and then I've highlighted with administratum grey and then celestial uh, celestra grey um, and this has also had uh, some hints of green put into it uh, the roof so far is looking a kind of like a terracotta kind of colour and you can see inside as well the baker's oven is a kind of terracotta colour too stonework done so I'm just going to now Next job is painting up this one missing roof panel. It's going to go in there. It's more fang brown at the minute. And now I'm going to um, uh, paint it up. And the colours I've been using for doing this have included uh, a Mephiston race, a red. Mephiston red. And I've used uh, rat skin flesh. And I've used uh, Troll Slayer orange. And this fella. Uh, Zemezi Desert. As a final highlight. So I'm going to do this bit here and then that will be all the roof done. Now I do often get asked when I'm making these models how long um, they take. And I, every time I'm asked that I have absolutely no idea. I really don't keep kind of count. But I can confidently say that this time round, this model so far has been made watching the entire series of Firefly. And now I'm about to carry on painting watching the Empire Strikes Back. So that gives us a few hours. Uh, definitely so from that point of view haven't watched all the extras on here though might have to geek out and do that too
why the paint's dry on the walls. I'm going to paint some of the details on some of the sacks in the bed. Well, today's watching while we continue to paint uh, the first great train robbery starring Sean Connery and Don Sutherland. Okay, so the lighting might have changed a little bit because it's now daytime, still painting. Uh, this is where we're at. We've got some of the details half kind of painted. I've still got a few bits to do there. <sighs> Building is now mostly painted. All the black work needs a bit of highlighting, weathering, and then we're going to need to do the back garden, water pump, flock, plants, that kind of thing. Um, so let's crack on. I had to get asked by people um, what additional things I use for uh, details on my models, plants and, and grass and tufts and bits and pieces. Uh, the I mostly use railway model stuff, uh, mostly because I like to support a couple of local shops that are railway model shops, so I go and get bits and pieces there, as opposed to in ordering stuff online. And these are some of the things that I, I tend to use. Um, I use a lot of static graphs, tufts, usually um, Pico, um, you call it can of course make your own um, and there are a number of wargaming companies that produce uh, static grass tufts I like using the stuff that's got little bits of gravel and bits and pieces with it too you can see I use quite a few of those um, I also use stuff from uh, TP um, there are cabbages here they're quite nice they're going to go in the back garden maybe elderberries there are uh, raspberries on uh, raspberry bushes and there are other things on canes and all sorts of bits and pieces i also use uh, javis scenix um this is ivy this is a red ivy the, the leaves on this are absolutely fab um and i use a collection of sticks you can buy sticks from companies like woodland scenix really you could go out and get them off trees i'm fortunate to have quite a cool twisty tree in my front garden so i tend to use bits that have been blown down on a windy day i started to use some brown scatter material different leaf scatter which adds an extra layer of detail uh, and helps mess up the whole place i uh, can't remember who i bought that which company that came from you can of course make it with um different spices off the spice rack you know all those things you don't actually use to cook with um but this is this is bulk stuff too so i'm going to use all of this or bits of all of this in the uh, detailing of the bakery so i'm going to get on with that now i also use a woodland scenic mid green flock uh so it's what's on most of the, the bits of bases of the figures that i use and all of my scenery has been based in a similar style to the figures so that's small bits of stone um bits of flock earth uncovered and in some cases i'll have Static grass tufts and other bits and pieces too. So everything is deliberately designed to go together So it all looks right when it's on the table First up then are the static grass tufts Although this is a building that's essentially designed to be an urban building medieval Urban is quite different to modern urban. So I still expect grass and plants growing through and all sorts of things. So this helps to Take the edge off some of the hard lines, I like plant, uh, patches of grass growing through and such. Next, um, I'm going to add uh, some plants into some of this back area here. Some of this is going to end up grassed. Some of this will end up with, uh, as an allotment, I'm going to have a little wood pile over the back too. Next up, I'm going to have a vegetable patch. It might be possible to question the season that my games are setting because I have all sorts of things flowering in the back garden. But I'm going to use these little cabbages. Now these are made obviously to go into a railway model and they've got quite a large spike on it on the bottom. I don't know if you can see that there. So I'm going to cut off all the bottom of this spike and I'm going to super glue the cabbages down to in rows in the back garden as if they're part of an allotment out the back of the house. So there we go, there's my cabbage. In the clippers. Not in focus. I'm going to cut off that back spike. Here we go. Bike off, take some. I'm using Gorilla Super Glue 
the brush version. And I'm just going to splat down some glue down there on the ground. And I put down several in a row. And I'm going to have, you know what, I'm going to use about eight of these cabbages. I think neatly growing out the back of the house. So cabbage, stick in glue, leave to dry, easy peasy. There we go. Okay, using some taller plants here now. Um, these are deliberately chosen, so they're going to go up behind the wall um, and add a bit of extra height to block line of sight uh, for characters in some places. Now, again, these are made to go on a railway layout, so they're built around cocktail sticks and clip off all the bottoms of the cocktail sticks, super glue these directly down to the base. Use those and uh, these, which are elderberry bushes. These are big and chunky as well. They'll be quite, be visually quite appealing. I'm going to try and leave most of this area open though for figures and for gameplay. Wood in a, a baker's is going to be really important, keeping the oven going. And they're going to get through a lot of wood, so I'm going to pile up. Uh, I'm going to take a bunch of bits of a tree, and I'm going to cut these into lengths about. 10 15 mils long. I might even snap them. Oh, I can't snap them. Take my clippers, old school Games Workshop clippers, chop those up, and then I'm going to take a knife to them and split them. And we're going to make a wood pile by the back door. Now, the cool thing about this stuff is, yeah, I might even be able to get away with not bothering to paint this because hey, it's wood. We'll see how it looks in a minute. Here we are then, with uh, the backyard coming along. Cabbages, elderberries, whatever they are. Uh, wood pile coming on there. I'm going to add a load of green flock to this now around the edges and take off some of this. And then that will be mostly sorted. Then we've just got to get the um, physical, the scenic, the resin details sorted out and stuck on too. And we're very nearly there with this model. It's coming on. I'm very pleased with this. Gonna be a really nice addition to my table. Okay, so I've mod podged in the garden. Uh, often I'd use green paint, but actually it's all got all the brown underneath. So if I lose any of the flock now, we're gonna get uh, brown earth underneath, which is absolutely fine. So now I take my Woodland Scenics mid green flock, and I'm literally just gonna drop that in there. Doesn't matter how messy this gets. Really till I can't see any of the mod, mod podge anymore, any of the white PVA glue. And then I'm going to leave it on for a few moments to pour it off into a tray. And then I'm going to do the same around the outside of the wall. That way there it will blend into my tables. Okay, that's flop. Get my flocking tray out. Oh, for flock's sake. There we go. Is that then this tray lives under the workbench tip all that off there onto a piece of paper and that way I can recycle that put it back into the pot now we've got grass all over the backyard fantastic starting to look more and more like a finished item So one of the things I do like to do with my models is take photographs and all lit up. Um, uh, previously, I've used the flickering candles you can get from kind of hobbycraft and the like, but recently I've decided to try and get a little bit more into LED stuff myself. My systems are going to get more and more sophisticated, but in the meantime, I'm using a 3D printed button um, battery holder, a flickering LED and a button battery yourself, and I'm going to stick these one on each side to the underside of the roof, thus, and that way there I'll get yellow flickering light uh, in the model where I want it to be. So that's how they're going to go. I'm going to stick these on using um, all-purpose Yoohoo glue. Making progress with the detailing then. We've got doors, uh, a water pump over here, 
different breads in bowls that need finishing off a uh, water barrel some grain uh, in bags sacks of flour and the the shop board to go out the front uh 75 percent painted nearly there well i'm calling this one done there might be a few extra details to add to it but on the whole it's ready to go onto the tabletop but there you go here's my no expense spared rotating device all around down to the window right at the front we can see the flickering lights there's our flickering lights on the inside lighting up the fire from the bread oven and from candles Have a look at the back end of that high from underneath the roof you see that back window there enough interesting detail there but also plenty of room for gameplay figure wise and the rest of it uh, which is quite cool my own mouse baker um, because Michael Oswan doesn't make a mouse baker he can't make absolutely everything all the time for everybody so this is the mouse baker that I have made on Hero Forge we're going to do a video about Hero Forge I think uh, but he works well enough to be a little NPC so here I've taken out the uh, roof panels on both sides and you can see inside the bakery we've got the nice Iron Gate Sceneries Baker's Oven which the only thing I regret now is that I stuck this in early on and what I really should have done with this is played around a little bit and drilled holes into it to put an LED right inside it but nevertheless it still looks pretty cool very pleased with that um, and if we come around this side along with the Iron Gate bread and the like on the front um, table we can look inside the model here and we've got more bread having been prepared and a barrel of water and a barrel of bag of flour in there and the baker's bed and chair out the back as well so i'm very pleased with this model in general these are the two roof sections then uh, as you can see we're flickering leds on them i've got uh, used three home printed um, button battery holders and three flickering leds um, and they're not going to stay in there permanently. The idea is I can move those around. So I'm going to equip more and more of my buildings with these handy little battery holders. They only take about 45, 50 minutes to print on a end of three. Uh, and that way there I can have flickering lights in different buildings when I want them. Otherwise, still very handy little bit there. like that a lot. That's the complete model then. Lots of nice little features about this. Actually putting it on a nice rectangular base like this with these uh, stone walls, it's gonna help delineate uh, the layout in the town. We're gonna get definite streets or alleys or, or bits and pieces here which help that overall look. It would work perfectly well in a small village or rural setting as well because it's got a little back garden, that kind of thing. So it's a very versatile model, this. A nice addition to my collection. I'm looking forward to getting it on the table which might happen next week. Uh, at least one friend coming around to play B&B next week. We might do a, an urban game. You never know. Um, there you go then. That's the complete model. This is the uh, end then of my Burrows and Badgers bakery build. Uh, happy with this. Nice little extra additional models to go on the table. An NPC there for different scenario possibilities possibly. Um, yeah. Thanks for joining me on this. I hope you found some of this interesting, especially maybe the, the, the detailing uh, and also the, the tiling of roofs and bits and pieces. You can see how much effort goes into making one of these models. I have watched all of Firefly plus the first great train robbery, The Empire Strikes Back and Indiana Jones and The Last Crusade whilst making this model. Um, so from that point of view, I know it's taken quite some time. Uh, thanks for watching. Magra 3 Builder of Worlds. Do make sure you subscribe and leave any comments down below. I always love to hear what you think of the models that I make. Uh, at some point, I'm going to have to really get on with a Necromunda project I've got in mind and also something for Lord of the Rings. XPS foam and houses for Dunlendings beckon, I think. But next, I think we're going to be on a water mill. Burrows and Badgers, because there's the wheel made already. See you again. Bye-bye.